block it before. Okay, perfect. So we've got maybe one and a half hands in the audience, something like that. Oh, and another one, excellent. And um, how many of you have actually built apps on Slack before? Okay, <laughs> perfect. Well, hopefully we'll give you some inspiration today on how you can get started building your own apps on Slack and some of the cool new tools that we have available to make that even easier. So even if it is the very first app or integration that you build on Slack, you can see that it's pretty easy actually to get started. So, as I said, I'm Lotta. I'm a solutions engineer here at Slack. So I work with our customers on use cases or technical queries they might have, or if they have questions about integration. So if after this you want to ask me any questions around that, I'm more than happy to have a chat about what you want to build on Slack. So let me get started on just giving a bit, a bit of background on the Slack platform itself. So on a short answer, what can we do on the Slack platform? Quite a lot of different things. So for example, we can do slash commands, like we saw with Guru that Jonathan was showing us. We have interactive messages, so we can have dialogues where we can enter information into other systems, such as a help desk um, application. Um, and you know, a lot of other things, but that's really a very basic answer, and it doesn't really give us the whole picture. So to understand what we can really do with the Slack platform, we have to think about what is the core message behind Slack, and what's the mission of the company. So we created Slack to make people's working lives simpler, more pleasant, and more productive. And how this ties into integrations is that we don't want to limit you by just giving you a couple of features that you can build on. We want to let you build whatever you want so that you can bring the most efficiency into your company by building around the processes that you want to build. So I'll start off a bit about messages just to give a bit more context. So a message could be on the simplest level, as we see at the top there, just someone posting into a conversation, whether that's in a direct message or whether it's in a public or private channel. But messages are not limited to just those. They could also be coming from our bots or from other integrations with other applications that we have. And they could be more interactive, so we could also enter other things like, for example, buttons or you know, any information that we want from those other systems. So this probably isn't too relevant for a lot of you because you haven't built apps on Slack before, but I'll just give you a little bit of a background of what it used to be like to actually build these messages in Slack. And what it would look like would be a bit like this. So we would use chat.postmessage to post that message into a channel into Slack. And we would then say, okay, what's the channel that we want to actually push this into? And then we would have our attachment. And that attachment would be a JSON payload a bit like this. And we can see that we've got just a lot of linear text, so it's not very easy to understand exactly what we're posting into the channel. And if we look at the post itself, we don't have that much control over the formatting of that post. So we decided, let's make a better way. So the new shiny way is block it. And what this is, is now going to be our primary UI framework. So it's going to make it a lot quicker and easier for you to build those integrations that you want, those applications that you want. And it's basically stackable bits of UI, so you don't have to start from scratch. You can just kind of use our builder, which we'll talk about later, to really quickly and easily prototype these. Or you can ask the other users in your organization to prototype these for you. So rather than them kind of trying to explain to you through um, diagrams or interpretive dots what they want you to build, they can mock that up, pass the code over to you, and then you just pop that into your app. So what does this look like now? So our blocks are different sections. So I'll go through all the different components we have available to us. But just to give us a bit of an idea, now instead of just having one big, long message attachment, we're breaking this down into our separate blocks. So I can see that we have a section type block, and also I have a divider there. So two different UI elements that I've used in this specific very basic message. But let's make that a little bit more interactive. So now I want to add in a button. So I can see that I've added a new accessory, which is the section on the right hand side. And we've now made that into a clickable element that I can interact with. Um, to give you an idea, so those are very basic examples, but we can have, for example, if I want to get um, some samples of restaurants that I might want to visit when I go visit a new city, we can have a rating app like this where my colleagues can suggest restaurants for me and I can select which one I want to find out more about. 
And what we're looking at here is a message that has to be designed with Blockit. And I can see where we have multiple different sections. So a section could be, very simply, just text at the top. But we can also have a divider, which is now able to really quickly and effectively break that content up. So it's a lot easier for a user to scan through that quickly, especially if you think about it, if you have a lot of messages in a channel, that white space can make it a lot easier to read. I have another section below, but this looks very different to my first one. And that's because we've also added in some emojis in the form of those stars and an accessory in the form of a picture. So we've now seen we could have accessories as clickable elements like actions, but also just as simple as an image. And down at the bottom, I have a block of just actions. So all of these buttons um, are actions that I can take directly from that message. And just to bring it back to Guru that we saw a minute ago. So this is an example of what Guru used to look like before Blockit. And as I mentioned, it's, it was very cluttered. A lot of the text would be quite hard to read if you're scanning through it quickly. So with the addition of Blockit, we've been able to make that a lot more interactive and also a lot clearer to read with the use of something as simple as a divider element. And another really interactive integration is Doodle, who have, uh, they're actually a planning app. So if you want to work with your team to figure out what's the date to have our next um, team offsite, for example, <coughs> people can enter their availability and select the date that suit without even having to leave Slack. So again, that's one less application that you have to leave Slack in order to engage with. So what are the different options that we have? We've talked about these a little bit, but it could be sections. So we could use Markdown, so we can add in, for example, um, formatted text. And for example, here is a slightly more um, advanced version of sections. This is a number of different sections that we've used together with various elements of block kit within. We can have blocks of images. So an image basically would be an image and a description of what we're looking at. We can have context. So what we're looking at here is actually um, the ability to add metadata or descriptions to some of these sections. So for example, here we're having a vote about where we should go for food. And I can also then see the, um, the what would I say, the avatars, sorry, there we go, of the individuals who have voted for each of those. So I have a little bit of extra context about what's going on in this block. We can have our actions, so they could be a simple button, it could be, for example, a date picker, it could be a drop down, and it could also be a overflow. So these are all different examples of actions we can take. And the divider, so again, really simple, it is really just that gray line, but it can help you to make it a little bit easier for people to parse in a hurry. So what are the tools that we have launched to help you with all of this? So as I mentioned, there's a block kit builder to allow you to really quickly and easily prototype these apps. So even if you have members on your team who might be more on the UI side who don't want to touch the code at all, that's their problem. They can mock that up for you. This will generate the JSON as we can see over on the right hand side. They can send you a link to this and then you can start to actually build in any integrations or other functionality that you want to add. And we can also see down at the bottom, we can also test it out. So if I build this message here in the Blockit Builder, I can send it to a channel of my choice to test what would this actually look like in reality within Slack. And finally, just to give you some best practices and to get you started, we've also launched some templates for some of the core things you might want to use Blockit for. So whether it's approvals or notifications, again, you don't have to start from scratch. You can then just start to add in your own functionality to these core templates. Um, so I was going to have one more slide, which was where you can actually go to find more information about this, but um, it is the Slack API documentation. We do have um, links to Block Kit Builder, templates, and all of the documentation around this. So I'd recommend, even if you haven't played around with creating apps in Slack before, that's a really great place to start. So um, that's available um, since a couple of weeks ago, so you can get started straight away. Cool, and that was it.